Okay, here we go. Hey everybody, Dan Johnson here again with Aggressive Fun. Today we're going to explore how to get into a locked truck with a malfunctioning padlock. Couldn't get in. We were going from place to place, picking up different items and load them into the truck. When we got to the, the final stop, couldn't get the lock to work. And here it is after all of the stuff I'm going to show you. And what I learned was, well, I'll tell you the moral of the story at the very end. Let's check it out. Come through. It does get hot. We're not making much headway. So here's what we're using. One of these, the Dremel, just the typical Dremel tool. You can see it there. A cordless, now would be really nice, but I don't have a cordless one. And this is the Multi-Pro variable speed. And when I got it, it came in one of these, one of these kits like this, which is nice, has all this extra stuff. You have a, an extension here if you need it, and all of these other pieces. So, what we did is we're scratching our head wondering what in the world are we going to do to get inside of this truck with this goofy malfunctioning lock. Yeah, you can see if you can get to it. Let me hold that. Hold this way. This is a bigger one. What the fuck? It's not, it's not budging. What type of lock is this, Reed? Circle lock. Circle lock. I think it is. Is it X type? Yep. X type. Won't come off our budget rental truck. Dave's the man to talk to. This is aggressive fun. Now one thing that I noticed after we were all done is this says stainless on it. Hopefully you can see that right here. And, and on padlocks you see this quite a lot, that there's lettering here that's in, uh, embossed into the metal. But typically you don't see stainless. Who puts stainless on there? How is stainless going to make me think that this is a heavy duty lock that's going to keep everybody out? In fact, you usually see hardened, like this one, which happens to be a master lock that's much better quality than this one from, let's see, where might this be made? Oh, it's Stainless Lifetime China. So keep that in mind as you watch the rest of the
cut through. I mean, he got through. Didn't he use like a tweezers and like a screwdriver to open it back up? So one thing we learned is that's very, very good in doing this is you want to have lots of sparks. If you see lots of sparks, you're doing it right. If you don't see very many sparks, then you're not going anywhere and you're burning up your wheels, which is this one. Now these were both described the same way. In fact, here on the packaging it says, for slicing and cutting metals, also can be used on plastic and wood. Okay, so this is the fiber type. I've actually used this quite a lot in the past and had really good luck with it. But, this was the end result. After I went through these two and didn't get very far, I thought, man, this is not working. And I just so happened, this was a, a number, a Dremel number 426 wheel. That's a fiber um, cutoff wheel, reinforced cutoff wheel. But I also discovered that I, for some reason, had the foresight to buy this one as well, which is the 540 Dremel cutoff wheels. It's not fiber, it's, it's more, it's almost like a ceramic, but this one the description is for slicing and cutting metals, also can be used on wood and plastic. Cut off a bolt head, um, reslot screw head, cut and size metal closet shelving. So it can do a lot of things. And the, the first line there for slicing and cutting metals also can be used on plastic and wood. Gives you no idea how this one is different from this one. And it turns out this guy, the 540, is the one that will just give you tons of sparks. This is the wheel that I ended up using that's still attached here that is the one that you want for this job because check this out, it puts out sparks. You know what the Porter is? 107, 105. Porter one? Yeah. Dude, I don't know how Porter one's been so bad this year. I don't know, they even got mellow.
get it, get it, get it. screwdriver oh yeah come on nice thank goodness for YouTube what is it cut through no, I didn't even get halfway through that thing. Jeez. At least on that side. On this other side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you can see it a lot better. Cut, baby, cut. This is Aggressive Fun by Dave Johnson. Okay, let's do this other way a little bit. I think I can break it out of there if this one's done a little more. Oh yeah. Yep, there you go. There you go. Is she back already? Back what? Oh, oh yeah. From California? Are they already back? No, they're not. Let's go. What's that? Just a little chip. She's still got to get through all that. Just almost that. through. Yeah, you're almost through. Get the very, very end. <laughs> so this one's a teeny bit more. Then I need to go down that way on that one, make it so it's a bigger gap. Yes! <laughs> Alright, Dave! Woo! 
That's the man right there. It didn't even damage the truck. This is a lot. I had insurance on damage to the truck, just so you know. So it didn't matter. So there it is. So there you have it. The, the moral of the story is this one's from China. The master lock, it might be made in China too, but at least it has hardened on the, the metal. <laughs> so it's not claiming that it's just stainless, but it does say that it's hardened. And they're just better quality locks. This guy, the lock mechanism seized up, key broke off inside. No way to get it off other than cutting it. The Dremel tool came through and was the big hero. <clears throat> so hopefully that was helpful. Got you into your unit as well. Made it so that you could get your your door or your truck, whatever the case may be, open. Huge, huge eye-opener with respect to locks. In the future we're buying a higher quality lock and have that Dremel tool handy because you never know what you're going to need to cut with it and it did a great job. Hopefully that was helpful. Now let's go find some great ideas, make some awesome products. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.